Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you have any questions for our guests, there are many ways you can contact the show. You can post a question on our wall on Facebook, Skype us, send us a tweet on Twitter to at The Organic View, or you can contact me directly at June Stoyer. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. On today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming Lucas Blair, the co-founder and lead designer at Little Bird Games, who is working on a new strategy to help educate the kids and parents about the global decline of our pollinators. So I would like to welcome to the show, Mr. Lucas Blair. Good afternoon, Lucas, and welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Thank you. Lucas, can you share with our audience about your background and also your interest in, in bees? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, education-wise, I've, I've always been kind of a, a biology, entomology uh, nerd. My undergraduate degree was in biology, and, and I, I've always also been interested in education. So that got me you know, into working on instructional technology. That was my master's degree, and then eventually a PhD in modeling and simulation. And, and during that time, I really got interested in, in teaching people with games, uh, specifically educational games and simulations. Um, and, you know, after finishing my Ph.D., I founded a, a company called Little Bird Games uh, with my wife, Danielle, and um, we've been uh, making educational games ever since then. And, and my interest in bees, or I should say our interest in bees, um, it kind of happened about, about a year ago. There was, you know, we started watching a lot of documentaries, so uh, like Vanishing the, Vanishing the Bees, things like that. And then also in the news, there have just been so many there was so many news stories just every day you turn on the news and there'd be another story about you know something's happening to the bees colony collapse disorder you know no one knows what it is and and we wanted to get involved and you know because we make educational games we felt like education and then specifically educating hopefully children uh, would be a great way that we could contribute so thank you when it comes to this particular project how do you feel that this, the work that you're doing will really help not only p the children, but the parents to understand what's going on? So the, the format that we chose is actually an, an e-book, a children's e-book. And, and we, we chose, you know, we make educational games, so we, we, we're embedding games inside the, you know, the children's e-book. And we chose that format because, you know, when 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 you know parents read with their kids they're they're experiencing the content together and we thought it would be a good way to you know expose kids to the to the information to the content but then also parents as as they're um reading the stories and hopefully playing the games together so we have um the and i can tell you a little bit about the story it's um a, a bumblebee larvae is accidentally taken into a honeybee hive and raised by the honeybees and then uh, as when she when she emerges, the queen says that she can stay in the hive, but she has to learn. You know, she has to stay busy like bees do, and um, she has to learn honeybee jobs. So that's where our six games come in. So when when the the lead character Bumble, when her honeybee trainer Beatrice is teaching her how to be a honeybee, um, the the you know the people that are reading the the kids and the parents that are reading the story, they can hit a button and and play all of the games. So we have. You know, all, all six games actually match, um, you know, r real bee jobs. So things like foraging, you know, feeding, feeding the, the larvae in the nursery, cleaning the hive, defending the hive, feeding the queen, those kind of things. So um, I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, for the kids and the parents to play the games, but then also enjoy the story. And it's it's a great format, too, because it's, you know, games are, are repetitive and, and stories are repetitive, too. You know, little kids will read a story over and over again. Um, and it's a great way to teach little kids, um, you know, about a new subject with, with all that repetition and then the interactivity from the games. So we're, we're very excited about it. Thank you, Lucas. What ages are these games suited for? Uh, I think the, the games that are embedded in the story, uh, we're going to shoot for, you know, maybe pre-K and kindergarten in terms of difficulty. Uh, and those are the ones that are embedded with the story because the expectation is it's going to be a young kid reading with their parent. Um, we're also going to include an arcade mode where 
you can, you know, there, all the games can be selected from a menu and you can just go in and play. I just want to play the foraging game. And we're actually going to have the games that are embedded in the arcade mode. They'll have some kind of scaling difficulty. So older kids, adults, anybody can go in and, and play the games and be challenged while they're playing them, but then also really learn about the jobs that honeybees do. So, and, and one thing that I should tell you about the, uh, the games we've, we had, experts from the Xerxes Society and then the Center for Pollinator Research at Penn State, um, they're actually making sure that the content and the, you know, the, the story and then the, the, the game mechanics that we use are actually reflective of, you know, how honeybees actually work. So there's, there's good science behind these games and, and behind the, uh, the story. So, because it's important to us that, you know, we're, we're, we're telling kids a, a fun story, they're playing fun games, but, we want them to really learn when they're do you know when they're when they're playing the games so i think it's very important that you're taking those measures because especially when it comes to educating kids about any subject the information has to be accurate and in order for the games to be effective i think that once the kids are in become interested and engage with the different um, scenarios, then you know, perhaps if they hear something in the news, they read something at school or even read a book, they can say, hey, you know something, I had this experience and I've learned this, this, and this about it. And I think that is really such a great way to educate, once again, the kids and the parents about what's going on with our entire pollinator population so your your initiative is absolutely wonderful and i'm just curious how are you going to spread the knowledge throughout the schools would you mind taking a moment and just sharing that with our audience oh uh, yeah sure so there, there there are a couple different things that we're going to do to you know we really want to extend this beyond um you know just just games and just just some games and stories that parents and kids are playing so so one of the things that we're going to do is after they're done reading the book, after they're done playing the games, we're going to have a section in the ebook that that also has additional information. That's you know one of the ways that the Xerxes Society is really helping us. You know, if you if you get families interested in, you get students, you get young kids interested in this subject matter, I want them to be able to go make a difference immediately. So we're going to have resources where they can you know donate to worthy causes. They can you know books they can read, you know, movies they or you know documentaries they can watch, that kind of stuff, and. You know, we also want to build in one of our stretch goals for the Kickstarter campaign is to um, put in a, a way for uh, families to plan a pollinator garden. So, you know, a simple drag and drop interface. You say where you're say where you're from. The the it'll it'll make recommendations about you know what you should plant, and they can plan that out. They can print it out, take it to a store, and then you know have an immediate impact on you know at least pollinators locally by having a garden like that. And then for schools, what we're going to do is. Uh, one of our rewards in the Kickstarter, are, are two of them actually, are specifically about schools. We really want to get um, the, the, these books and the content and, and you know all the, all the instructional material in, into schools. So one of our rewards is that, um, you know, and this is for Pennsylvania schools specifically, uh, people can you know pl pledge five hundred dollars, and we will the, the school li the school library is going to get a copy, a couple copies of the book, and then we're going to actually go to the school, spend a half day with the kids. Um, we're going to play games about biology, play games about bees. We're going to, you know, learn about bees and pollinators and stuff like that. And I, I think it's a great way to get the message out there. And then it'll really tie into, you know, some of the some of the science stuff that you know that's going on in schools anyway. So it's a a great a great way for us to have some outreach into schools about this important you know, important subject matter. Thank you. Could you share with our audience why you chose to use Kickstarter and exactly how much is involved with the creation of the Lost Babe project? Sure. So for, for anybody that's not familiar, Kickstarter is a way to crowdfund projects. So it's essentially a uh, website that you know people like me go to and we say we have this great idea. We've already put a whole lot of work into it, um, but to, to be able to fund the rest of the project, we need – uh, you know, we need we need help. We need help from anybody that's interested in the subject matter, anybody that wants to see this project happen. And and so, you know, what you can do is you can go in and you can pledge an amount. And we have rewards associated with with each of the levels. In some cases, it's um, you know copies of the book. You know, we have special edition um, soft cover and hard cover copies we're going to make where you can get prints. Um, you can get you know or even original artwork. And then, as I said, we have um, 
some of the upper level rewards will actually spend a, uh, you know, a half day at some schools or a day in businesses talking about game design, um, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, you know, and the, the, you know, the format for Kickstarter is kind of an all or nothing thing. So, um, you know, we're asking for, or we need $32,000 to be able to pay for essentially the, you know, after Kickstarter and Amazon and after we pay for the rewards with the, with, uh, some of the, the funds that we raise, um, the rest of that money is essentially going to go to programming and editing. Um, the programming is really going to be the bulk of it. Games are, um, expensive to make. That's one of the things that, uh, people don't realize we're not just making a book. We're actually making six educational games and, and maybe some more if we raise additional funding, but, um, games are very time consuming to make they're difficult to make. And we need to, you know, to be able to pay a good programmer to, to program the program them and make them. Um, we're taking care of, we're, you know, donating our time essentially for design and for all the artwork, um, my wife and co-founder uh, Danielle is uh, doing all the painting for the book. So she's hand painting all the scenes um, and she's doing all the digital art for the games, but we need to, uh, need to bring, need to bring a programmer in to make this thing happen. So. And the, the artwork is really, really beautiful. And folks, if you'd like to visit their Facebook page for the lost bee project, you could go to facebook.com forward slash the lost bee or you can connect with them on Facebook, Little Bird Games, and their website is actually www.littlebirdgames.com, where you can learn more about uh, Lucas and his wife, Danielle, as well as see the beautiful images that she has designed, and they are just magnificent. Uh, one last question. Do you have to live in the United States to not only get involved with this project, but to have this project make an impact in the school system that your kids attend. Uh, you no, know, absolutely not. I mean, anybody, anybody around the world, because this is a this is a global problem. This is a, this is a world problem, and we're trying to you know we want to we want to teach kids and parents about you know about about this subject matter all over the world. So we. Any of the rewards, um, you know, the physical rewards can be shipped, you know, shipped overseas. Um, and then, you know, one of the things that we're really encouraging people to do, any of our rewards can be donated. So if you want to buy, you know, a couple copies of the book, a couple copies of the ebook, um, donate those to schools. They donate those to, to local libraries. We will, we will very, you know, happily mail those wherever you want them to go. So, you know, not only will you be helping us make make this product with with your with your your donations your pledges um but but you know let's let's figure out a way to get these things into classrooms into libraries you know all, all over the world so thank you so much lucas and once again can you give the information to our listeners about how they can get involved with the lost bee project sure so uh, our facebook page for the lost bee is just facebook slash uh, the lost bee um you can connect with little bird games on there as well just facebook slash um, little bird games and then uh our, for our kickstarter link it's a little bit long but if you go to kickstarter and just search for the lost bee um it'll it'll come up and we'll be tweeting about it you know uh you know so so at, at little bird games you'll, you'll be able to get the link from there as well and folks there will also be an article on the organicview.com about Lucas's project and some of the artwork will appear on there as well uh, in addition to a link to the Kickstarter campaign. Lucas, it has been a pleasure talking to you and so it, it's so exciting to talk to people like you who are innovators who are using the skills that they have in order to bring about the necessary education that people really need to understand what's going on and that we need to protect our pollinators. Yeah, thank you very much for having me and we're just we're just excited to be involved with this. I mean, you know, like I said a year ago, this was just kind of an an idea that we had. We we wanted to help out and and this is this is just our way and I think everybody that everybody that has a, a little niche or or a skill you know, if, if you're interested in this, figure out a way to, to, to chip in to help, you know, with so and we're doing it with a with a children's book and some games. So but thank you very much. You're very welcome. And folks, thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with the Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone.